Okay, um, good afternoon everyone. Thank you very much for attending to this uh, presentation. Um, we should start on time because here it's like uh, we have very limited time, so I really would like to take the opportunity to um, br bring this message to all of you. I'm really happy to see some familiar faces. Um, I would like you, if, if you haven't get any of these uh, white papers, which is supporting a bit uh, the presentation, just you can come here later when we finish or at any time. Yeah. Um, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Henry Cáceres. Uh, I work for Group PED. Um, it's not the time right now to talk about the company. It's more about aeronautical data for uh, aeronautical data management for air drones. Uh, but first of all, I would like to start. Who of you is familiar with uh, this AIS and AIM story? Have you heard? Yeah. Okay. Good. So we're talking the same language. That I like. That I like. You. So most probably you are relating or you are refer anytime that we refer to AIS to AIM, uh, we're talking about uh, an air navigation service provider. But now we're bringing you something else, a different subject, which is aerodromes. Yeah. So maybe you might be wondering, but what, what does it have to do? Aeronautical data management, uh, AIS thing, AIS stuff, but in this case for aerodromes. Yeah, and this is what we're pretending uh, to bring you this, in this opportunity. And I'd like to start with a concept that perhaps some of you are familiar. Is any of you familiar with the GIGO? Yeah? Anyone? GIGO, what does it mean? Thank you very much. This is a very IT related concept that some people know it like garbage in, garbage out. And what is the meaning of this garbage in, garbage out? What it means is that we can have um, some input that if this input is not the correct input, the right input, then it doesn't really matter what you do here in the middle yeah, or in the process, you're going to have very fantastic and nice packages of garbage. You can have in the end organized packages, but full of what? Of garbage. Yeah? So, I want to start with this. I know that it doesn't have to do with uh, aeronautical information, but we'll try to see uh, how this is related later with aeronautical information and especially related to aerodromes. So you told me at the beginning that many of you are familiar with this from AIS to AIM. Yeah? What is this aeronaut from aeronautical information service to an aeronautical information management? What we're talking here about. So if we can summarize, what is this? whole story that, that's been driving us crazy for almost a decade, it's moving from standardized products in paper, in AFTN, in AMHS, like you see here, like books, moving to a different type of provision of the aeronautical information, which is changing now to a more digitalized, centralized databases and uh, providing data services, but now in a different format. Not anymore in paper, not anymore in FTN, but more in a digital format like service-oriented architecture, web feature services, and web map services. And in the end, the final product that we have, or the, the, the end out of this, will be data. That's the whole story. And in this way, we can summarize what is this transition from AIS to AIM. And as I've been saying, um, uh, the states, they have been struggling and putting a lot of efforts uh, in this transition. Yeah, from AIS to AIM. But there is a problem with this transition from AIS to AIM. And the problem is that this, it's actually in the middle. This transition from AIS, it's addressing the middle part of the whole information flow. So I'd like to introduce a little bit, how is this information flow going? Because what happens with aeronautical information is that everything starts at the originator side. Here's where we have all the funny things they close the airports, they close the airspaces, um, they activate airspaces, zones, etc. right? This is uh, where, where, where all funny things happen. So what they do later, it's uh, that they transmit this information, usually in a conventional way, to the AIS provider. And the AIS providers, the AISP, they know what to do with this information. Most of the times, they are, they are being supported by a database. And in this database, they create the conventional products that we have in AIS. Being this, the AIPs, 
aeronautical information publications, or the NOTAMs, the notice for airmen. And what else? But this is not the end of the story because right after this, we have the users. And the users, what they, what they get, it's actually a copy of these conventional products. This is how we are right now officially providing aeronautical information. A couple of years ago in 2018, ICAO, for the first time, mentioned in their documents that we have a different way to provide data, to provide information. In this case, in the form of data, the so-called digital data sets. I don't know if you have heard about the digital data sets. Yeah, it's also driving a little bit crazy all the people around the world, uh, especially the states. But the idea now is that instead of having um, conventional products already elaborated, we're going to empower the user and we're going to give him or her the data so they can produce their own uh, products. Yeah, they can create their own charts. They can create their, their own uh, briefing um, documents, etc. So, but if we see here, this information flow, there is a problem. And the problem is that uh, the way this is being exchanged, it's in conventional format, in conventional way. It's like, a, and, and you wouldn't believe me, but sometimes it's like a, from the airport, somebody is calling the AIS and telling, hey, taxiway 43 is closed. Yeah, and the other one goes to a machine, an AFTN machine, and they type in, what did, what did he say, taxiway 43 or 53? And that is the way it goes. So we are actually uh, losing a, a lot here, the integrity of the data. So what we want in the future is to replace this way of communication on top to be also digitalized. And if we go in this direction, maybe this will disappear and who knows, maybe the conventional products that we know right now as the AAP in no terms will also disappear. And we'll move from what we know as information flow to a fully digitalized data stream from originator through the ASP through the final user and why not through the cockpit in the plane yeah and then we come with these concepts like in flight bulletins that maybe it's a subject for another presentation someday so the transition from AIS to AIM was actually addressing this and this is what I was telling you at the beginning these efforts that we've been putting for more than a decade they have been addressing the middle part question is who is taking care of this other part? You remember the first slide? Garbage in, garbage out. It doesn't really make sense if we are digitalizing the middle, if we are not taking care of the first part in this data chain. So this is uh, um, uh, also something that uh, ICAO, especially in Europe, they have been uh, um, now addressing, yeah? We're gonna, because in the end, what we want to go, it's into this fully data exchange, yeah? Where we're gonna receive some data and we're gonna deliver to the final user some, some nice data packages so that they can uh, uh, work with this. So what happens with, uh, in, in Europe is that um, we've been uh, struggling with this, especially from the regulatory point of view, with uh, several regulations for even since 2010. We started with uh, Regulation 73, so-called ADQ. Familiar with ADQ? 73, some of you, okay. And then uh, um, in uh, 2014, uh, we had Regulation 139, and 2017, Regulation 373. There was a confusion for some years because ADQ 73 was addressing AISPs, 139 airdrome operators, and 373 ANSPs. But this all confusion was actually clarified in 2020 uh, when we had two more regulations which were amending and replacing and we repealing several regulations which in the end only left two specific regulations. Regulation 73 was repealed so ADQ regulation does not exist anymore since actually 2021 and um, regulation 139, which is exclusive for airdromes, it's in place, including um, all the uh, aeronautical data requirement for airdromes, yeah, specifically for airdromes, and 373, it's including the specific requirements for ANSPs. In other words, AISPs, yeah. So now we have a clear separation because at the beginning with regulation 73, they were like mixed up. Airdrome 
uh, data management requirements with AIS data management requirements with originators. But now we have a clear separation in regulations in Europe. In the end, what we have is a set of um, uh, regulations which are addressing exactly as I mentioned, um, one for the airdromes and another one for the ANSPs. We're going to focus in this one, in Regulation 139, which is the one that defines requirements for aeronautical data provision, aeronautical data quality management, common reference systems for aerodromes. We're not talking about AISPs. We're not talking about um, uh, the AIS, AIM units anymore. We're talking about how the aerodrome operators should manage data according to the European regulations. And if this was not enough, we have now new challenges. There is a new regulation, and, and I believe that some of you are familiar with this. Regulation 116 of 2021, the so-called CP1, or Common Project 1. And what is this new regulation addressing or, um, uh, or um, defining? It's defining new functionalities to be met by the end of 2025. We are now in 2022. So if we think about it, we only have a couple of years to meet these requirements. And what are these requirements? These requirements specifically, I'm just mentioning some of them, those are, which are related to aeronautical data. Um, and they, they have um, um, uh, integrated this in uh, the so-called AF5, addressing the stream requirements. And what we are requiring now is to have aeronautical information feature service, aerodrome mapping service, and digital note and service. And who is addressed by this? I mean, who has to implement this type of um, service provision? Actually, web service or data service provision. Who is addressed by this? And note how interesting this is because we're talking about Regulation 116 in connection with Regulation 139, which is addressing aerodrome operators. Yeah, again, only the aerodrome operators. And what they need to do by 2025 is to implement service, services, feature service, mapping service, and open services, which is data services. So just as an example, um, the digital NOTAM service as defined by regulation 116 will be covering this part. Yeah? And for the first time, we are just like um, um, trying to improve how the data is originated from the very beginning. Yeah? So just to give you an example, how it would work, it would be something like this. We have the airport operator and we, have, uh, we will have someone uh, with a graphical tool, with a graphical application yeah, um, where they're going to have um, airdrome mapping, for instance, and they're going to select from there, just like in this example, a runway. You can imagine, you can right click on the runway and then you're going to select a list of uh, statuses. Yeah? And then if you want to close it, you, you click runway close. From the originator themselves. It's not anymore like uh, I'm going to call someone and going to say, hey, runway 8180 uh, is closed or something like that. It's going to be a totally digitalized environment. And this will be transformed into an AIXM or XML message and will be received by the AISP in a digitalized way. This is what they are trying to implement in Regulation 116. Um, and in this case, I'm taking only the example of the digital nota. I was asking you before, who is affected uh, by this regulation? And uh, there are actually 18 different airports all over Europe affected by this regulation who would need to implement these type of uh, feature services, mapping services, and the digital note and services. How they are going to do it, if they're going to do it individually or if they're going to do it in, 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 in um, in, um, with the uh, support of ANSP or Eurocontrol, we don't know yet. Yeah, there, there, there are some other presentations actually in this, um, in, during this event, maybe by tomorrow, I believe by Magnus, we're gonna join him tomorrow, who will give us also some more information about this. So what do we need? What is the solution for this? Because we have a goal, and that is that by 2025, the aeronautical data um, management for airdromes it needs to be changed in a different way. We need to digitalize also that part. So what we need in order to uh, be compliant with the regulation is of course we need to have awareness. We need to know what's happening, yeah? Uh, all the organization, the management, the directors, they need to know what are the different requirements that they need to fulfill. This is only uh, obtained by 
uh, training, workshops, briefings, etc. You whatever you want to call it. Then you need to do a gap analysis, and then you need to define what are the actions to fill in these gaps. In Group AD, we've been also developing um, some specific products to address this because in Group AD we have been uh, dealing with aeronautical data for almost 20 years. Yeah, we are uh, those who started with this data management. Yeah, we consider ourselves pioneers in the aeronautical data management. So we have an exclusive AIM Academy. We where we have been. Uh, providing um, services, training services to more than 9,000 participants all over the world. Uh, we provide virtual and, and classroom uh, and, and face-to-face -face, uh, trainings. We have seminars, we have different type of trainings. We have a specific uh, a specialist program now, right now, which is specialized in digital AIM products. But we have also defined uh, what, we like to cons what we like to call the uh, data management package for consultants. And in this data managed package, uh, what we have, it's a basic toolkit uh, where we first perform a gap analysis with an e-questionnaire with uh, more than 300 questions where we can actually um, have at the end of this questionnaire um, a detailed picture of what is the status of compliance of the organization. And then we're gonna get a, a report and in this report, um, we're gonna address later the missing um, requirements or the gaps, yeah? how to fill in the different gaps. And um, in the end, we could also support you with uh, some more um, support, training, or even uh, support you in, in, in the rest of, of the road. So you might be wondering, why us? Why Group ED? I mean, Group ED, we've been dealing with aeronautical data, as I mentioned, um, actually for almost 20 years. But we also work 24 seven hours. So anytime we'll be there uh, trying to, to, to support you yeah, uh, in, in any problem that you have. We've been working with aeronautical data since 2003, since the EAD was established. Group ED is actually the, um, uh, the so-called data operations uh, provider for Eurocontrol. Um, our staff is coming from more than 14 different uh, states. We actually speak different languages, English, Spanish, um, um, what else? I forgot. French. French Portuguese. Exactly. Portuguese. Portuguese. Thank you very much. Yeah, it seems that you know some of my colleagues. <laughs> um, and finally, because we leave AIM. Yeah, I mean AIM. It's our blood. Actually, we're proud to say that we have we are pioneers in this AIM because everything started with the European AIS database implementation, and then the world saw that having a centralized database for aeronautical data was actually a good thing. And then the transition from AIS to AIM came. So if you want to blame someone about the transition from AIS to AIM, that can be Group ED. <laughs> and this is it. I, I hope that uh, you got um, some interesting information right now. Um, you can visit us at booth uh, number 586. And I think I still have two minutes for questions, perhaps, if there is any question. If not, don't forget that we have here some white paper for you to read uh, about the aeronautical data management for, for aerodromes. I hope you have found uh, this um, um, presentation interesting and hope to see you in our booth. Thank you very much.